Another thing we uh, do as really uh, do regularly is the uh, genetic polymorphism. So for any given population, when we start with a survey at the particular interest of the gene or genes, then we'll say, okay, what's the polymorphism level in the population? And this becomes a very important uh, parameter or phenomena to investigate if we want to know the history of the population or any uh, evolutionary forces influence the population dynamics. So that's something we do really commonly. So the genetic polymorphism is defined as the variations existing in the population. So usually we just do a survey. As I said uh, earlier in this class, we say we can commonly survey the blood type. So every one of us will know our blood type is either A, B, AB, or O. Then we can do a calculation about the genetic variation at this particular allele. At the sequence level, we can do the same thing. The practice is very similar. It's just like sometimes we look at, like at the gene level, look at the entire class of alleles, or sometimes more often nowadays, we look at the sequence level and we talk about individual um, <coughs> size of a given gene or a given gene region. So if everyone is the same, then we say the population is monomorphic. If there's a polymorphism that exists, means there's alternative alleles in the population, then we'll say it's a polymorphic. So that would be like more than two alleles segregating. Uh, you segregating means like the, the alleles is transmitted to next generation. When we use segregating means they will, be, they will segregate in forming the uh, gametes and would become zygotes after fertilization. That's what we call segregating. So those are the terms you will read in the literature. Then when we want to look at genetic variation, then we'll repeat some of these formulas later when we're concerning about how to detect uh, the signature of selection. So, that, But this is sort of like a warm you up how we look at that. So we can calculate heterozygosity, means how many individuals are heterozygous in the population. And we also can look at the divergence or the polymorphism level within the population. And here in this uh, slide, just show you the heterozygosity uh, usually we concern, and it's very simple because you can, the, what do you mean by heterozygous? It means like, the overall population, and you exclude those are homozygous in the population, then the rest will be heterozygous. So the allele frequency there, xi, it means like for a given locus, the xi is the, just like your p or q, is the allele uh, frequency. Then square is the homozygous, probability of forming a homozygous. 1 minus the overall homozygous individual are the ones that like heterozygous. So that's the formula showing here. So it's very um, simple to tell like what does it mean. So 1 minus all the homozygous individuals are the one residual for remain to be heterozygous in the population. And that's the heterozygosity. If you can look at heterozygosity at individual level, so sometimes, for example, we can examine chromosome polymorphism or isozyme polymorphism, or you can genotype the individual, then you can see if, if it's homozygous or heterozygous by experimental approach. Then you also can simply calculate the heterozygosity. And one thing sometimes we usually do, it's just like we ask, in earlier in this chapter, we say, okay, if we, based on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, we can test whether the population is at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So you already know we use chi-square. For heterozygosity, it's the same thing. If you have a allele frequency in the population, and you also know exactly how many individuals are 
the heterozygous. And you can use the allele frequency to calculate the expected heterozygosity, right? Because you have P and Q and you know exactly what P square and Q squares are. Then you say, okay, what's the ideal, what's the expected heterozygosity? That's 2PQ. Then you look at your population and you examine the genotype of each individual one. Then you say, okay, actually I observe certain amount of heterozygous in the population. And you can simply ask your observation and the expectation. And you can put the numbers together to ask whether they are fitting to each other, whether your observation are within the range of our expectation. So that can do a simple statistics test to tell you whether the heterozygosity is much higher than expected or the heterozygosity is much lower than expected. So that's something you, we also do as a, a common practice looking at whether there's any other parameters operating in the population. And you can also look at multiple loci. So the formula we just show you is a, a single locus and we have different alleles. Then I say one minus all the homozygous, then it's the ex expected heterozygosity. And you can do very similar thing as the like for the multiple loci condition. So this is like the formula showing here.